Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. I hope you're all well. Um, just a quick reintroduction. My name is Mark White. Um, I'm uh, HMI in the East of England region, and I'm also Offset Subject Lead for Computing. Now, our starting point for this session um, are the summary points that Heather shared at the end of the main presentation. But what do these look like in computing? So to distill those points, I'd like to try and answer these two questions. The first question focuses on the most significant knowledge that should form part of a recovery curriculum in computing. But this question is complex, and what I share today certainly cannot answer this with any certainty, as I don't know what your pupils have learned or potentially not learned so far. However, what I can do is hopefully help us reflect on what we might consider to be the overarching organizing categories of knowledge in computing. By zooming out and thinking about how knowledge in computing is organized, we are better placed to be looking in more detail at what we might or what might go into identify as the most significant knowledge. Secondly, is a question of giving the best chance of pupils remembering what is taught. There may exist a temptation to rush through curriculum content in the name of recovery, but computing is awash with complex concepts that simply cannot be rushed through. So linking to the previous question, this is about selecting the most important knowledge and ensuring that pupils have the best chance of remembering it. Before we look at what knowledge might be the most significant, it can be useful to remind ourselves of the aims of the national curriculum. Now these are suitably ambitious outcomes for pupils to achieve as they move through the computing curriculum. However, they are just aims and represent outcomes of the curriculum, not the means of their nurture. In designing a computing curriculum, we'll need to work back from these and break things down into more manageable chunks that we can sequence over lessons, weeks and terms. So we've seen the high level computing aims that pupils work towards from the national curriculum, but there's potentially a much bigger question at play. And this question links back to those overarching organizing categories of knowledge I mentioned a few moments ago. How do pupils get better at computing? And to help us think about this, it'll be useful to categorize computing knowledge. But there are a number of different ways of categorizing knowledge within computing. However, the three I'm about to introduce here are recognized within the sector and they are how the Royal Society have framed computing curriculum content. And these categories are also very visible in the aims of the national curriculum. The first category, computer science, concerns itself with knowledge of how computers work and knowledge relating to computation. And within that category, we might see knowledge of algorithm programming, so knowledge of how sequences of instructions can be implemented on a computer system to solve problems. We might see knowledge of data, the different ways data can enter a computer system, how it might be processed, and finally knowledge of how it is output. And also knowledge of systems, so knowing how different component parts of a computing device work together, and then how that computing device might work as part of a larger system, such as the internet. The second category, information technology, organizes knowledge of how computers are used purposefully. And within that category, we might see knowledge of digital artifacts, so knowledge of and knowledge how to create digital objects. And also knowledge of computing contexts, so how computing is used in various ways and what technology, legalities and ethics underpins those uses. Finally, we have digital literacy. And this is knowledge of how to use technology in an effective, responsible and safe manner, from the mechanics of using computing devices through to searching for and selecting information to those important uh, to that important knowledge that's taught um, as, as part of e-safety. And we might simply summarize these categories as the knowledge of how computers work, the knowledge of how they can be used, and the knowledge of how computers can be used effectively and safely. And I'll be referring back to this table as I progress through the presentation. But these categories do not usually sit in isolation and would all be present in a broad and ambitious computing curriculum. Yet it's possible that during the pandemic that one or more of these categories did not receive as much curriculum focus as it would in normal times. So it's important to consider what knowledge may have been missed as a result of any curriculum adaptations that were made. And just a note of caution too, 
computing, like all subjects, is complex. In this presentation, I'll be zooming right out to consider the curriculum in its widest sense. I'll only be offering very much just an introductory overview. With that said, I'd be very happy to explain my thinking further with any colleagues who are interested via email. So do get in touch with me if you'd like to talk about um, you know, this wonderful subject more. Let's look at our first category, computer science, in a little bit more detail. As we reflect on the extent to which this was adequately covered throughout the pandemic, we might want to look in particular at algorithms. Now, typically, we might see algorithmic knowledge develop in the following way across phases. In the early years, algorithmic knowledge might focus on everyday tasks in a child's life, such as preparing food or getting ready in the morning. Knowledge of sequence can be built by ordering steps in a process using time connectives, such as first, next, and then. And there are opportunities to lay the foundation of schema for more complex algorithmic elements, such as repetition, either in the number of steps or in time, such as brushing teeth for two minutes. And also decisions, such as if the lid is on the jar, take off the lid. As we move to key stage one, we might see the introduction of more technical vocabulary, such as algorithm, sequence, and debug. Knowledge of how simple algorithms might be implemented on digital devices, such as robots, or within simple programming environments. In key stage two, we might see the introduction of core algorithmic constructs, such as repetition and selection, or decisions, in algorithms, and implementing algorithms in a more complex programming language. In key stage three, building upon this knowledge, but adding to with knowledge of standard algorithms used for sorting and searching data, such as a bubble sort. And into key stage four, developing a wider and deeper knowledge of algorithms so that pupils are able to make valid comparisons between different algorithms and start to evaluate their efficiency. And in key stage five, Developing knowledge of specialist notation for defining the efficiency of an algorithm and also learning more complex types of algorithms, such as those for finding the shortest distance between destinations on a map. Now, this knowledge isn't disconnected. Its emphasis and sequencing within a curriculum are crucial. Pupils enrich their schema over time with each new piece of knowledge they draw upon, what they already know and create ready readiness for what is to come. Now, this is represented by the triangle, showing how that body of knowledge builds throughout a pupil's schooling. Key questions to think about are what happens to the triangle if pupils do not build expected algorithmic knowledge during the pandemic? Is it jagged? Does it stop prematurely? Or is it just not as wide as it could be? And all of these are potential outcomes. Now, these will all be problematic in pupils developing the knowledge of not only algorithms, but also programming, as the two are very much linked. Like the Jenga tower shared by Heather, without a thorough consideration of all these component parts, our overall schemas can develop gaps and become wobbly. We've had a look at algorithms, but another significant aspect to knowledge within computer science is programming. And it's difficult to talk about the computing curriculum without spending some dedicated time discussing programming. And although programming is not the entirety of the computing curriculum, it is a reasonable size part, and it's also an area of the curriculum that may have been adapted more heavily as a result of the pandemic. So what is important to think about in terms of recovery? Well, firstly, it's important to recognize that knowledge of programming is hierarchical, a bit like the Jenga tower again. It requires a secure base of knowledge to build those higher levels. If the foundation is not secure, the tower becomes wobbly or comes crashing down. What that really means is ensuring that component knowledge is secured before moving on to more composite concepts. Otherwise, pupils develop the belief that programming is too difficult, they will become frustrated and they simply give up. Secondly, there might be need to consider them or there might be a need for the consideration of programming language choice. Although most program languages are freely available and can be used at home on computers or mobile devices, this may not have always been possible during the pandemic. Some thought needs to be given to what knowledge pupils have built within certain programming languages and what is most appropriate now. The only prescription for programming languages in the national curriculum is the expectation that pupils make use of two programming languages in Key Stage 3, at least one of which is textual. 
the pandemic presents a chance to reevaluate how and when pupils move to a second language. Thirdly, there's a need to consider the scope of the curriculum with regards to programming knowledge. To think about this, it's useful to strip back to the three core programming constructs, sequence, selection and repetition. Does the curriculum enable pupils to develop knowledge in these three areas? And then lastly, has sufficient time been given for pupils to have practical programming experience to use and remember their programming knowledge? If time is not given for pupils to have that practical experience, and as a result, they do not remember what was taught, then that time has been wasted. So we've considered two aspects within our first category of computer science. We've been thinking about how computers work. Let's now move on to the second category, information technology, knowledge of how computers can be used. And as a reminder, this is our second category in the table from the start of the presentation information technology in the red box at the top there. So what about knowledge of digital artifacts? Well, a digital artifact is a digital object that can be created using the computer. And I use computer in the broadest sense to include other devices such as tablets or smartphones. Examples of digital artifacts within information technology might include presentations such as the one we're reviewing now, 3D models, videos or animation, or even spreadsheets. So let's look at a specific example in the creation of presentations. I'm sure many of you will feel that your pupils are confident in creating presentations, and it's possible that the development of knowledge in this area was less impacted by the pandemic. However, what component knowledge is needed for pupils to skillfully use presentation software to create presentations for a specific purpose? Now this slide samples just a fraction of knowledge required to use presentation software well. On the left, we have knowledge which we might be considered to be knowledge of or knowing what. So we have the composition of slides, knowledge of the rule of thirds, appropriate font styles and sizes, and copyright protection, such as that on images. On the right hand side, we might have knowledge that is better described as knowing how or knowing how to, such as how to set up a slide master, how to edit images, change fonts or other elements, and also how to apply animation. Now, as I said, this is just a sample, but we can see that there's more to presentations than we might possibly think about. For pupils to be fluent, competent users in the creation of these artifacts, they need to be taught the components that lie beneath. And by practicing these components, pupils can develop expertise. So let's apply this lens of component knowledge to an area of digital literacy, our final category from our first table. Now you are looking at a learning graph from a unit of work provided by the National Center for Computing Education. The NCCE are DFE funded and provide computing CPD and through Teach Computing provide access to curriculum and teaching resources. As I said, this is a learning graph and it's from a curriculum unit on networks and it brings together many different knowledge categories and is an example of the interplay between those different categories and how they come together. Now, this graph shows a series of linked outcomes, but I'd like to focus on the highlighted outcome in the yellow box to the right. And I know this may not be um, easily read, so I'll read it out to evaluate the reliability of content and the consequences of unreliable content. Now, this is a desirable learning outcome that we would want for all children. But what knowledge do pupils need to learn to be able to perform this? And to think about this, we need to explore what component knowledge pupils will need. Now, firstly, it would be useful for pupils to develop knowledge of the types of content they're likely to encounter, such as videos, images, text, and sound, and the different forms and sources where that content might be sourced. Pupils will also need to know the different features of reliability, not just the generic features that apply to all content, such as the source or author, but also content specific features, such as indicators that an image has been digitally enhanced or photoshopped, changes in the shadow, tone or color, pixelation of parts or, or any distortions. 
You just also need to develop knowledge of examples and, and non-examples and, and to know what that looks like for reliable content. And this will add to a pupil's schema, enabling them to better recognize content, which is likely to be reliable. And finally, that component knowledge of the consequences um, of unreliable content, as pupils are unlikely to know this unless they are taught. Once again, we've worked back from a composite to the necessary components required to perform this composite well. As we reflect on our final category, digital literacy, it's worth considering the presumption that children in our modern world are digital natives, i.e. they are surrounded by technology from early age, will intuit expert use of it as a result. But is that the case? Well, it is the case that the pandemic has given pupils increased opportunity to practice their use of digital devices. However, practice does not necessarily make perfect, it only makes permanent. Pupils will possibly have drawn incorrect inferences through their more independent use of technology. They may have developed misconceptions and may use inefficient, incorrect or unsafe processes in their use of devices. And it's important that work is done to identify those misconceptions and teach the correct and most efficient way of using devices, whatever those devices might be. And again, this will all be based on need but may well focus on the basics, such as using a keyboard and mouse effectively, with knowledge of hand position and knowledge of key location underpinning this. The knowledge of effective shortcuts used for everyday tasks, such as copying and pasting, switching between windows or programs and making quick changes to formatting. But also knowledge of how to navigate and use devices effectively, so they're able to use those devices for more complex composite activities. For pupils to develop effective use of devices to automaticity, it needs to be revisited regularly throughout the computing curriculum to strengthen pupil schema. The curriculum must identify all of the components that pupils will need to encounter to ensure they develop effective and appropriate levels of digital literacy. We've now covered those three main categories that I introduced at the start. Importantly, we've focused most of our time on the curriculum. But before I wrap up things up, let's consider pedagogy. Now, when selecting teaching activities, it's important to focus those activities on achieving curriculum goals. Are those activities the most effective in teaching the intended subject content? Now, one popular pedagogical approach within computing is the use of unplugged activities. And a recognizable unplugged activity might be giving instructions to a teacher acting as a jam sandwich making robot. Now, unplugged activities can be useful in making the abstract more concrete. However, not all unplugged activities focus sufficiently on computing knowledge, or they can create unhelpful abstractions or even distractions that prevent pupils from learning what was intended. A second point is to consider the time efficiency of activities in the computing curriculum. Do activities provide good value in achieving those curriculum goals that we've explored over the last few slides? Are pupils given excessive amounts of time to experiment with new software or programming languages before being taught how to use them effectively? Are disproportionate amount of time, amounts of time being afforded to activities such as design and presentation? And then lastly, just to recognize that computing is a subject rich in complex concepts. As a result, teaching can sometimes focus far too heavily on the abstract or the inverse, spend too much time in the concrete, such as in the overuse of unplugged activities. It's important that knowledge is regularly unpacked and packed between the abstract and the concrete to ensure that pupils remember what is taught. And finally, on to assessment. Now, the first point on assessment is recognition that computing subject content can be both hierarchical or cumulative. That is to say, in terms of hierarchical, that some aspects have to be taught in a specific order and each of the components must be remembered. Some cumulative aspects of the subjects can be introduced at different times and have different emphasis. There doesn't need to be a set or systematic approach to things. The second point on assessment has been a theme through this presentation. That's to ensure there is sufficient focus on the component knowledge that pupils need to be able to engage in those composite performances. 
in computing, the pupils build things. They write programs or create digital artifacts such as videos or animations. And there could be a temptation to only assess those final products. However, in doing so, we don't really identify what pupils remember or can do from the curriculum. And this can be particularly true of those more hierarchical aspects, such as programming. We're missing just a few key components, such as correct understanding and use of variables, can prevent pupils from developing new programming knowledge or being able to write programs at all. And thirdly, that there's no separation between knowledge and skills in computing. When we talk about the skillful use of devices, programs or programming languages, that use is predicated on secure subject knowledge. In that sense, assessment tools such as skill ladders can be unhelpful in assessment as they do not identify the knowledge that pupils need to demonstrate that skillful use. So to conclude our session on computing, I'd like to um, go over those, those points in summary. Firstly, it's important to consider the breadth of the curriculum across the categories of knowledge thinking about why, what might have been missed as a result of the pandemic and how that fits into the interplay between those different categories. To emphasize component knowledge, those small building blocks necessary for those more composite concepts or activities that come later. To think about hierarchy and sequencing, those parts of the subject where those building blocks are essential to be established early so pupils are able to build on them and be successful. To consider planning teaching to meet curriculum goals and also the selection of the most time efficient activities in achieving those goals. And then lastly, to, and this seems obvious, but to use assessment to identify what pupils don't know um, and not just to focus on those final outcomes. Um, that the pupils you know, will inevitably create in computing. <laughs>